As the 32-bit era began to expand to include new consoles like the PlayStation and Saturn, exciting new possibilities were born. Much of the 3D polygon landscape had been dominated by arcade games at that point, but in 1995, we began to see some new software showing up that showed us the future of the entire industry in just about every genre. Stuff like Panzer Dragoon gave us perspectives we had never seen in shoot'em ups before. 3D fighters began to give us moves that would evade attacks not just left and right, but forward and back as well. 1996 brought us even more games of polygon engines. Among those, the much-anticipated Tomb Raider, an original property created by Core Design. It was one of the very first games that gave you a huge 3D environment that allowed you to go anywhere and explore at will. Unlike a lot of these early games, it was also multi-platform, so whether you had a Saturn, a PlayStation, or a PC, you had options to play it. In this episode, we are going to take a look at Tomb Raider for the Sega Saturn. Just how good was this game, and did it live up to the extreme hype before its release? We will also touch upon the PlayStation Edition and see how it compares. Hope you guys enjoy my review of Tomb Raider for the Sega Saturn. The story begins with our heroine, Laura Croft, being sent on a mission to recover an ancient artifact for a double-crossing benefactor. You soon learn that this artifact has been separated into three pieces, and you must search Peru, Greece, and Egypt in order to reunite them. Starting out, our adventure sees some pretty incredible things circa 1996. You are allowed to move about these 3D environments any way you please. Laura can run, jump, climb, swim, and do combat whenever and wherever she wants. Since this was released before the mainstream introduction of analog controllers for the Saturn and PlayStation, it does rely on tank controls and secondary buttons to control your finer movements. In other words, up always has you moving forward, down always back, and there are buttons to walk and sidestep so you can get right where you want to be. Combat is of the auto-aiming variety. Simply draw your weapon and Laura will lock on to the nearest enemy so you can blast away. There's also a look button you can use to see what's around you and a roll button to quickly turn around. The majority of the gameplay is searching for switches to pull and open doors and puzzles to solve typically by pushing and pulling blocks and putting them in the proper position. There is also quite a bit of underwater exploration to be done and yes you can drown pretty easily while doing it. You also need to be careful about fall damage. If Laura is too far up, prepare for a brutal death that sounds just nasty. The enemies you face start out pretty simple in the early game. You'll shoot down wolves, bears, and bats for the most part, but the real danger is the environment itself. Traps are everywhere and include boulders that crush you, spikes that impale you, and of course the most notorious of bad guys, the mistimed jump. The deeper you get in, you start to see some pretty fantastical enemies show up and the complexity of the environment and puzzles increases incredibly. Of course, Laura sees her fair share of help along the way. Healing items and new weapons are hidden throughout your adventure and you'll want to check out every nook and cranny to get them all. You're going to want plenty of stock to deal with the difficulty spikes in the second half of the game. There are also save points scattered throughout the adventure, but they are typically few and far between, making this a pretty large challenge if you legitimately want to beat it. When Tomb Raider launched, 3D polygonal environments that let you go anywhere you wanted were still fairly new. Stuff like Super Mario 64 had just been released a few months prior, and most of the stuff on Saturn like Gen War and Virtual Hydlide weren't exactly award-winning material. There simply was not much like Tomb Raider at its release. I was really impressed with how it looked too. Being able to run around and explore huge areas was something to behold. 
The frame rate was mostly fine and while the pixelation could be a bit rough, everything was easy to make out and see where you needed to go. It had some cool special effects too. Looking at the water gave you a sense that it was moving and there were some cool lighting effects in there too. In fact, I was really happy with the Saturn version visually for the first few levels. But as the stages got bigger and the geometry more sophisticated, things began to get a bit choppy. The performance begins to tank in a few of the more open areas, and it does affect gameplay to a degree. For short bursts, I'd even say, the frame rate gets so bad it approaches single digits at times. It was questionable enough that I decided to check out my friend's PlayStation version and man was I in shock to see them back to back. While the PlayStation version does suffer the annoying texture warping and cracking to a pretty irritating degree, there is no question that the detail looks better and the performance is smoother in some of the larger areas. The Saturn version is also overly dark and there are parts where the blackness just crushes the details all around you. The PlayStation does not suffer this to the same degree. That begs the question, is the Saturn release worthless in this regard? Absolutely not. The majority of the levels on the Saturn play fine, and while there are some real issues in a few places, this still looks impressive for its time. If you have access to both the PlayStation and Saturn, the former has enough improvements to make it an easy choice, but if you are rocking just a Saturn, the graphics here are solid enough overall to carry you through this adventure just fine. The design of Tomb Raider was clearly inspired by Indiana Jones and a few other popular comic and movie licenses. While you do have some moments of gunplay, the majority of this is exploration, puzzle solving, and environments that can kill you, and it excels at it. Your ability to push, pull, climb, and swim really opens this world up to doing few things games had done before it. The tank control does take some time to adjust to, but things are fairly easy to come to terms with. This leads to a sense of freedom that really helps set Tomb Raider apart from the games of the previous generation. There genuinely is nothing like this on the Genesis or Super Nintendo, and it plotted a new course for action games from that moment on. Whereas Super Mario 64 had been a fantastical acrobatic masterpiece with little in the way of consequence, Tomb Raider was more of a white knuckle thrill ride where a fall could mean your dead ass body was broken at the bottom of a cliff. And there was something special about that. Here you just didn't stamp down enemies mindlessly level after level. You needed to look for your path, find your way forward, and earn each and every new level with patience and determination. The story is easy to follow too. Bad guy sends you on a mission, bad guy double crosses you, and then you get to kill that bad guy. Cinematics were action-packed and did the character of Laura Croft proud, making her out to be a proper badass each and every time. Of course, the experience is slightly sullied a bit by the stages that perform poorly. While not many in number, there are stages here that can be somewhat frustrating to navigate, especially in modern times when games run well north of 30 frames per second. I honestly doubt many of you cared back then, though. As kids, you were probably just happy to play something this interesting. Performance be damned. I was also rather unimpressed with the lack of music and the audio presentation. While what you get is quite fitting and sounds good, there are many areas that have nothing at all. I appreciate the sentiment that you're alone in caves and ruins of past civilizations, but the eerie silence bereft of even ambient environmental sounds grows tiresome after a while. There are also some problems with the stereo sound when shooting your weapons. Sometimes it's glitchy and staticky when switching from left to right. The only other thing that really bothered me about old Tomb Raider here was the save system. The crystals needed to save were far apart at times, making some areas a replay nightmare until you figured out what to do. It can be especially tough nowadays because you can't just invest 15 or 20 minutes into it here and there because of the way the save system is implemented, likely turning away many newcomers.
Tomb Raider is an interesting game to play today. While you certainly can appreciate its contribution to the growth of 3D gaming, the introduction of dual analog solutions in the years since have really aged the gameplay. Going back to Laura's archaic control scheme has its charms, but I had a few frustrating deaths falling off of things I likely would not have had with a modern controller. There's no denying the popularity of this one though. It was one of the Saturn's best-selling games in both the United States and Europe, and even sold well enough in Japan to make the Satakore line, a group of best-selling re-releases exclusive to that region. This journey and its heroine were a staple of gaming for years, and the quality of the experience was top-notch for quite a while. In fact, only a year later Tomb Raider 2 hit the PlayStation and again had a huge critical and commercial reception. Despite being announced and in development for the Saturn, Tomb Raider 2 never showed up. At first, Core Design and IDOS claimed that it was due to the fact the Saturn couldn't handle the game, but this was utter bullshit. It was revealed later that the cancellation actually came when IDOS signed an exclusivity contract with Sony so that the franchise would be PlayStation only for quite a while. Another Tomb Raider would not grace a Sega system until the Dreamcast came along some years later. Ultimately, the Saturn version of the first game here has undeniable issues with its performance, but in no way was it unplayable or not worth your time. I think that Core Design did a fair job of the Saturn's complicated architecture for its first outing, and I would have loved to have seen a refined engine in a sequel. Despite the aged gameplay, these old Tomb Raider games are still quite fun to waste an afternoon on. She doesn't always run the best, but the fun factor is as good as it ever was. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.